The future of aerial combat is here, and it is none other than the powerful F-22 Raptor. This fighter, renowned for its stealth capabilities and next-generation features, has single-handedly redefined the boundaries of military aviation. Despite its mind-blowing cost, it remains the most sought-after fighter jet, reinforcing the United States' status as the leader in air dominance. But what sets this upgraded Raptor apart? What feature has made it the most formidable aircraft in the skies? Join us as we delve into the features of the new 2024 F-22 Raptor that has shocked the world. The F-22 Raptor is not just any fighter jet. It is the most feared aircraft with unrivaled features. The aircraft had its first flight in 1997 and was variously designated F-22 a before it formally entered service in December 2005 as the F-22A. Ever since it became fully operational, it ruled the skies with its second-to-none features, efficiency shooting down aircrafts that dared to challenge it. This air fighter is a technological marvel. After a protracted development and initial operational difficulties, this fighter became a critical component of the United States Air Force's tactical air power and will remain a cornerstone of the fighter fleet until its succession by the next generation air dominance fighter. However, while it remains operational, no other fighter jet has come close to surpassing this technological marvel because not only is it stealthy and hardly spotted by radars, it has features that allows it to dominate the sky with its sheer fierceness. This fighter can spot a threat from several miles away and can target it with an insane precision. It's no wonder the F-22 has never been recorded to be shot down in history. Without further ado, let us delve into the details of this formidable air fighter. What came about its development and the upgrade that it underwent, which has made it a more powerful aircraft. In 1981, the United States Air Force recognized the need for a new fighter jet that would take the place of the models like the F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon. This led to the beginning of a project called Senior Sky with the aim to develop an advanced fighter plane that could handle new threats from the Soviet Union. These threats included better surface-to-air missiles, new radar systems on Soviet planes, and advanced enemy fighters like the Su-27 and MiG-29. To meet these challenges, the Air Force asked aerospace companies for ideas, and they formed a team to develop the technology for this new fighter plane. By 1983, this team became the ATF System Program Office, managing the project at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. After refining their ideas and setting requirements, they asked for proposals from several defense companies in September 1985. These proposals focused on making the new plane stealthy and able to fly at high speeds for long distances. The requirements changed over time, with more emphasis on stealth technology by December 1985. Meanwhile, the Navy also wanted a new plane called the NATF to replace its F-14 Tomcat. Since developing this technology was expensive, companies were encouraged to work together. Eventually, Lockheed and Northrop were chosen in October 1986. Lockheed teamed up with Boeing and General Dynamics, while Northrop worked with McDonnell Douglas. They spent 50 months developing two prototype planes, the YF-22 and YF-23. These aircrafts were not meant for competition, but to show that their designs worked. The Air Force also hired Pratt and Whitney and General Electric to make engines for the new planes. During development, the Lockheed team redesigned their plane in 1987 to make it lighter. They used advanced technology like computer simulations and wind tunnel tests to make sure the plane met all requirements. They also made changes to save costs, like removing some radar systems and downgrading the ejection seats. Both teams built two prototypes, one for each engine option. The YF-22 flew first in September 1990 and showed it could fly fast without using afterburners. After testing, the Air Force chose Lockheed's design in April 1991 because it was more affordable and easier to make. Though the YF-23 was faster and stealthier, the YF-22 was more maneuverable and less risky the Navy later canceled its NATF program due to costs, but the Air Force's new fighter, named the F-22 Raptor, went on to become one of the most advanced planes in the world. 
After becoming operational and participating in large exercises to test its readiness for missions, the fighter flew on its very first mission for Homeland Defense in January 2007 as part of Operation Noble Eagle. Also in November 2007, several F-22 from the 90th Fighter Squadron at Elmendorf AFB, Alaska, intercepted two Russian 295 MS bombers as part of the North American Aerospace Defense Command. Since then, F-22s have also escorted Russian 2160 bombers during similar encounters. This fighter was also sent overseas for the first time in February 2007, when the 27th Fighter Squadron was deployed to Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan. However, this initial deployment faced a lot of challenges when six F-22s flying from Hickam AFB, Hawaii, experienced multiple system failures due to software issues while crossing the international dateline. They had to return to Hawaii with the assistance of tanker aircraft. Fortunately, the issue was eventually resolved swiftly within 48 hours, and the journey continued. Kadena Air Base became a regular rotation point for F-22 units, and they also participated in training exercises in South Korea and Malaysia. To enhance the deployment speed and reduce the presence in a conflict with peer or near-peer adversaries, the United States Air Force developed a concept called Rapid Raptor and it involves the deployment of two to four F-22s and one C-17 for logistic support. This concept was tested in 2013 at Wake Island and in late 2014 at Guam. However, further trials were conducted in August and September 2015 at various bases in Europe, and this was as a response to the Russian annexation of Crimea in 2014. The United States Air Force later incorporated the principles of Rapid Raptor into a new operational concept called Agile Combat Employment, which emphasizes distributed and austere operations during peer conflicts. What makes the F-22 so special and well sought? Let's get into the details. The Raptor, also known as Configuration 647, is a next-generation fighter jet. Aside from being highly developed, it is special because it's the first aircraft to have supercruise, which means it can fly really fast without using afterburners, super maneuverability, stealth, and advanced avionics all in one. These features help it survive and complete missions, especially in areas with a lot of enemy threats. The design of the aircraft helps it be both stealthy and exceptional at flying. The unique wing shape with smooth edges and a sleek fuselage shape of the wings and body enables the jet to remain undetected by radar. Unlike older aircraft, this one has various control surfaces like flaps and rudders that help it maneuver at high speeds. Aside from the unique shape of the wing and body, the F-22 also has a special way of carrying weapons inside its body to stay hidden from radar. Additionally, it has features like a refueling boom, retractable landing gear, and an emergency tail hook for safety. The Raptor is powered by two Pratt and Whitney F-119 turbofan engines that are placed close together and move their exhaust nozzles up and down to control the aircraft's direction. Each engine has a computer system to control it, and they can produce a lot of thrust. When the plane is fully loaded for combat, it has enough power to be very agile, almost like its weight and power are balanced. With its special air inlets, the fighter can fly very fast, reaching speeds of around Mach 1.8, without using extra fuel and even faster than Mach 2 with afterburners. Flying at high speeds and altitudes helps the fighter's sensors and weapons to work better and makes it harder to hit with ground missiles. It can also fly at supersonic speeds without using afterburners, which makes it more unique because other fighters require afterburners to fly at such exceptional speed. Carrying weapons internally means the F-22 has less drag so it can fly faster than other fighter jets that have been developed. With its design and powerful engines, the fighter can fly at Mach 1.2 at 52,000 feet, giving it longer ranges for both air-to-air -air missiles and bombs than the aircrafts earlier used by the United States Air Force. Its structure is made from strong materials like titanium and composites to handle the stresses of flying at supersonic speeds. One thing that makes the Raptor stand out amongst other fighter jets is its stealth capacity. It was developed in such a way that makes it very hard for radar to detect, and this is achieved by shaping its body to reflect, scatter, or absorb radar waves. One thing that keeps it stealthy 
is that it also carries its weapons inside and uses special materials to absorb radar waves. The fighter jet also emits less radio waves, heat, and noise to make it harder for enemies to detect. However, it is quite hard to know how well the stealth feature works because it mainly works against certain types of radar used by other aircrafts but it's easier to detect with lower frequency radars like weather or early warning radars because of its size. However, these radars are not always precise and can be confused by other signals. Even if a stealth plane is spotted on radar, it's tough for defenders to track and attack it accurately. The aircraft has a special system that combines information from all its sensors. This helps the pilot understand what's happening around them and makes it easier to fly. Some important systems include the electronic warfare system, the missile launch detector, the radar communication navigation identification system, and an infrared sensor that can detect faraway objects. The APG-77 radar on the F-22 is special because it can track multiple targets in any weather. It can also be used to send out signals that confuse enemy sensors. The radar changes its signals very quickly to make it hard for enemies to detect. It can detect targets up to 125 to 150 miles away and even farther in narrow beams. An upgraded version of the radar can also be used to map the ground, track moving targets, and support strikes. Next to the radar is the ALR-94 electronic warfare system, which is one of the most complex systems on the aircraft. It has more than 30 antennas all over the plane to detect threats from all directions. It can find targets even farther away than the radar and give enough information for the pilot to lock on to them. Depending on the threat, the system can tell the pilot to release countermeasures like flares or chaff to confuse enemy missiles. The fighter also has other sensors like the MLD, which can detect infrared signals from all directions, and the advanced IRST, which is a sensor on the wing that can identify and target faraway objects. The Raptor has a modern cockpit with digital flight instruments. The main display is a head-up display that shows important flight information. There are also six color screens that display more detailed information. The controls include a side stick controller and throttles. Originally, the Air Force wanted to use voice commands for control, but this was too risky and was dropped. The canopy or the cockpit cover is large and heavy. It had to be redesigned because the original version didn't last as long as it should have. The aircraft's radio systems are integrated into its controls, and there's a keypad for entering communication and navigation data. There are also small displays for showing warnings and flight information. The main display is used for navigation, and there are other displays for tactical information and managing weapons. To stay stealthy, the air fighter's communication system only sends signals in certain directions. Communication between F-22s is done using a special data link. It also has a system to automatically avoid crashing into the ground. The F-22 uses a standard ejection seat found in many Air Force planes. It has a special control in the middle for ejecting. The jet also has a sophisticated system to support the pilot's life. This includes generating oxygen on board, special clothing for protection, and a valve to regulate airflow to the pilot's mask and clothing to prevent G-forces and maintain proper pressure. The clothing also protects against chemicals, cold water, and extreme temperatures. After some problems with pilots experiencing low oxygen levels, the system was improved to include a backup oxygen supply and a new valve in the pilot's vest. In combat situations, the ejection seat is equipped with a modified M4 carbine for survival. The fighter has three hidden compartments for weapons, one big one underneath the plane and two smaller ones on the sides near the engines. There are also small compartments for countermeasures like flares behind the side compartments. The big compartment in the middle can hold six launchers for long-range missiles, and each side compartment has one launcher for short-range missiles. The main missiles used are AIM-120 AMRAAM and AM-9 Sidewinder, with plans to add the AIM-260 JATM. When launching missiles, the compartments open quickly and arms push the missiles out. This happens fast to avoid being detected and to launch during high-speed flight. There's also a 20mm cannon hidden in the plane's right wing, and its fire path is shown on the pilot's display. While the main compartment is mainly for missiles, 
It can also carry bombs instead, up to a total of 2,000 pounds. Though it can carry GPS-guided bombs, it can't guide laser-targeted weapons by itself. Although the fighter usually carries its weapons inside, it also has four strong points on its wings, each able to hold up to 5,000 pounds. These points can carry attachments like fuel tanks or missile launchers. The inner two points are designed to hold fuel tanks, while the outer two now have special pods for the aircraft's systems. If needed, the plane can drop the external tanks to keep its stealth and performance. To keep the fighter always ready for effective operation, every F-22 requires proper maintenance every 300 hours of flying, which takes about three weeks to complete. Also, the coatings used to make it stealthy are supposed to be stronger than older stealth aircraft, but they did not work well when the fighter jets were sent to Guam in 2009 because they couldn't handle rain and moisture. Keeping the F-22 stealthy takes up a lot of maintenance time, with the coatings needing special attention. To make maintenance easier, they are working on making tougher coatings. The major maintenance work for the fighters happens at Ogden Air Logistics Complex at Hill AFB, Utah. ALA Zero, they have to be very careful during the maintenance process of the fighter because there are very few units of the F-22s available, and they are without backup in case something goes wrong during the process. In 2015, F-22s were ready for missions 63 of the time, which is higher than the 40% when they were first introduced in 2005. The time needed for maintenance per hour of flying has also improved from 30 hours to 10.5 hours by 2009, which is lower than the 12 hours required. The average number of hours worked by people for each hour of flight was 43 in 2014. Initially, the F-22 needed maintenance every 1.7 hours, which was less than the required 3.0 hours. By 2012, it increased to 3.2 hours. As of fiscal year 2015, the cost for each hour of flight was $59,160 billion. However, the design of the Raptor is not limited to the earlier mentioned because it recently underwent a series of upgrades that had improved its performance. In Dayton, Ohio, the U.S. Air Force and Lockheed Martin are starting the second phase of yearly updates to the F-22 fleet. They're planning to make software changes and quick upgrades that will set the stage for how future aircraft will be maintained. Even though the Air Force plans to retire the F-22 once the secretive next-generation air dominance platform is ready, they're still spending a lot of money to keep it up to date. The USAF budgeted $3.5 billion for research, development, testing and evaluation for the fleet in fiscal 2024, with $19.5 billion planned over the next five years. The Air Force Life Cycle Management Center's Program Executive Officer for Fighters and Advanced Aircraft, Dale White, mentioned that these investments are very important in making sure that the F-22 remains effective against current and future threats. He also explained to reporters that the advancements made for the jet will also contribute to the development of future technologies, including NGAD. After the completion of a major upgrade on the F-22, known as Increment 3.2B in 2020 to 2021, aviation company, Lockheed Martin and the Air Force have shifted their focus to another approach, a new one called the Raptor Agile Capable Release Program. The first phase was completed in 2022, and it focused on updating the jet's hardware to allow it to transmit Link 16 data. The second phase of upgrade is the RACR2, a software modification program that has recently been approved and is now being implemented, while the third phase, or the Release 3, is expected to follow about 12 to 18 months later after the second phase. Additionally, the United States Air Force and Lockheed are focused on improving the range of the F-22 by testing the low drag tanks and pylons. However, these improvements are set to begin after the second phase, which includes the installation of the Racker Release 2. Lockheed also plans to carry out these upgrades under the Advanced Raptor Enhancement and Sustainment contract that is worth $10.9 billion. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.